I know I got cut off there, but uh, again, going back, how if you preach God's word, if you preach Jesus, if you live Jesus, and if he's in you and you abide in him, and you're renewing your mind with God's word, you will be a threat to the captain of the temple who wants to be in control, who, whether by hook or by crook, whatever it is, that they don't want you to talk about Jesus. They don't want you to talk about what Jesus said, repent or perish. They don't want to talk about the sin that separates us from God and that you must get that forgiveness from him, from God, by what Jesus did on the cross and by preaching the good news, by witnessing to the lost and by giving as we see need, but again, stealing that away from the body of believers because we are all priests and they, they take control over that and they say, well, now we are going to outreach to the community. Instead of, they ignore the individual command that each and every one of us should witness and testify of Jesus Christ. And that's what it comes down to. And it ends up that um, this is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. So what we see here is that the religious leaders, the captain of the temple, the pastors, the priests, the Sadducees, uh, the, the Sadducees didn't believe in a resurrection from the dead. And that, that kind of reminds me of, of looking at elders and deacons that have no, no purpose in the church other than to count the offerings on Sunday or to have business meetings and come up with little, little, uh, uh, little marketing surveys and things like that. There is absolutely nothing spiritual or, or mature about them in the Lord as in regards to disciplining or discipling other people or teaching God's word. Unfortunately, there are so many churches out there that are, have this type of organization and where these builders are not built on the solid foundation of Jesus Christ and his word and the truth of God and what was prophesied throughout the whole Bible, and th which takes us out of sin and brings us into the liberty and freedom that Jesus brings so that we can all go forth and minister and give as we see need. But rather they see that as a threat. And uh, in other words, this part here, this is a stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. In other words, we have pastors and associate pastors and senior pastors and youth leaders and elders and deacons of these churches that are building a, a temple and they're not, it's not based on the chief cornerstone. It's not based on Jesus Christ. It says, nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given uh, among men by which we must be saved. And yet you'll see these churches, churches, I'd say that uh, <laughs> with reservation, they will not talk to the other church down the street. They will not offer to help, but it's all about, it's not about preaching the gospel and say, hey, we're going to go out and we're going to testify and we're going to witness one-on-one -on -one to people. We're going to go out as a group and we're just going hit to the, hit the parks, we're going to hit the city streets, and we're going to preach God's word. And then if your pastor, if your associate pastor, if your youth leader is only concerned with, well, how uh, um, you're going to give them, a, a, you're going to invite them to our church, right? If they're more concerned about getting those people into, your, into that church rather than preaching the message of God's word and it doesn't matter where they go afterward, that should be a red flag. That should be a red flag. That should be like, whoa, wait a second here. If there are stipulations on the message that you preach on telling people about Jesus and what separates us from God and their sin, if a pastor uh, says, you know, hey, we're not going to have any witnessing classes because, you know, uh, that's not our job. I've actually had a pastor tell me that. That isn't our church's goal, is not to witness, is not to preach the good news, but rather to make disciples. But let me tell you this, believers, let me tell you this out those, for those of you out there who claim to be Christians, that if you make converts and you do not tell them that they need to repent of their sin, that in other words, that they can continue in on their sin, they don't have to ask forgiveness, they don't need to confess to God, there doesn't need to be a good fruit in their lives, you are making false converts and like Jesus said you will make them twice the son of hell as the Pharisees were and 
while I'm not saying that, that every single person in that church is, uh, is not saved, there are people there, but for the headship, the captain of the temple, to steer that organization down a road where it ignores the basic principles of Christianity and what Jesus and his disciples preached, you're in for a sad awakening because it's going to go from bad to worse. Because then it's going to be about market studies. It's going to be about uh, targeting and saying, hey, well, we're going to target people who make fifty to $80,000 a year that have 2.3 kids and a dog and have two cars and a house. And we're going to direct our mailing and marketing towards that demographic instead of doing what Jesus and the disciples did of preach to everyone, whether it was in the temple, whether it was on the streets, whether it was wherever it was, there was no pre-qualification of saying, well, you don't make enough money, so we're not going to invite you to our church. That is just the beginning. And when you stand up for God and his word and Jesus Christ, you're going to preach the gospel and you're going to be a witness and your, your life is going to be the light and the salt that goes forth into those people around you into those pastors, into those associate pastors, and if they're caught up in greed and corruption and power and position and they're the captain of the temple, you're going to be persecuted because you're threatening their position. You're threatening their control. You're threatening their livelihood, which is dependent on a watered-down gospel that doesn't include Jesus Christ and the full message that he preached, repent or perish. Now, am I saying that, that we need to get rid of all the compassion and all the encouragement or, or uh, being, uh, you know, holding somebody's hand and preaching the gospel in a way that's, that, uh, that can be loving? No, I'm not saying that at all. But when you ignore and you reject God's word, entire books of the Bible, there have been pastors I know that said, we, I will not preach from this book of the Bible because it is too harsh. Whoa, wait a second. If it's good enough, and if Jesus preached it, and it was good for the people back then, how much more do we need it in this perverse and generation that we have today with the number of false teachers and false prophets? But no, we want to get off into, oh, we want to get off and we want to build a uh, foundation. We want to build an organization. We want to build something that doesn't confront people because that makes them, them uncomfortable. And if they're uncomfortable, they're not going to come through the doors of the church. They're not going to pay their money. And we're not going to be able to keep the lights on. We're not going to be able to, to be able to go to these conferences and say, look at how much my church has grown, how many members we've increased over the past year. That is bogus. Quantity was never an issue. It was quality. Jesus himself said that few would find salvation, but wide and broad is the road, and many are on that road that leads to destruction. And it all comes from those that will not adhere to God's word and sound doctrine. That's what it comes down to. Here's the thing that if I'm going to have to make another video, I think, but it comes down to the point of where uh, there is no other name under heaven in which we must be saved. It is not an organization. It's not a program. It's not a denomination. It's not a temple built with the hands of men. It is based on Jesus Christ and him alone because he has been given all power and authority by God. So if you stand up for God and his word, it's going to end up, if they're not, your light is going to shine forth. God's light is going to shine forth. His truth is going to shine forth. And it's going to show the darkness. It's going to show forth the sin. And you have to apply it first to your life. And if you get to that place and you start living it and bringing it into those places, you might find yourself being cast out. You might be threatened, tell, being threatened to not do what you're supposed to do and what God's Word says. So let's go ahead and uh, do another video and we'll do part three.